Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing a video on integrating even powers of sine and cosine. We've done a separate video already on the odd powers of sine and cosine and integrating those, so if you need that particular thing, check that out. Here we're going to work four examples, I've got them pictured on the screen here, um, with these integrals where the sine and cosine terms have only even powers in the integral. Uh, so you notice in these four examples, all of the integrals have only even powers of sine and cosine. We will use double angle identities to reduce those powers. So you might want to brush up on your two double angle identities for sine and cosine. Uh, we'll go ahead and remind you of those here. So if I have the integral of cosine squared x, we will be using the identity that cosine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine of double the angle divided by 2. I'm going to go ahead and write the other one down here for this one that we're doing next to it, the sine squared x. So the sine squared x double angle identity for that is going to be 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. So identical, both have cosine in them, right? It's double the angle, one's plus, one is minus. Okay, let's go back to this first one. So I will just simply change this into that exact identity, 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. I'm going to go ahead and write it exactly like that to start. Um, you'll notice that everything is over 2, so I think probably the clearest thing for most people to see will be to bump that out as a 1 half. So we'll really see this as 1 half integral of 1 plus cosine 2x. And then everything is pretty straightforward from here. When I integrate, I have a 1 half. I get the antiderivative of 1 is x. The antiderivative of cosine 2x, so first of all, the antiderivative of cosine something will be sine of something. And because you have a 2x in there and we're integrating, remember the reciprocal of 2 will come out. So we'll get a 1 half there. We'll have plus our c. And then if we distribute the 1 half, that's going to give us an answer of 1 half x plus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus our constant. Okay, so that's our first one here. Let's go back up and do the second one. So we were doing integral of sine squared x dx. Remember our double angle formula is a little bit different and it has a minus in it. So we'll be integrating 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2, and in this one again think of the same type of thing with the over 2 where we really think of it as a 1 half on the outside. So we will instead think of this as 1 half times the integral of 1 minus cosine 2x. And really this is super similar, right? The only thing that's different here is that we have um, a, a minus instead of a plus. So we have a 1 half, our antiderivative of 1 is x, minus, again, the antiderivative of cosine 2x is going to be sine 2x, and reciprocal of 2 will come out front, just like before in the last one. We will remember our plus c. We'll think about distributing 1 half to everything, so we will get 1 half x minus, this time, 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. So those are super similar, right? If we just have cosine squared x, or sine squared x. Let's look at something that is not quite so identical. Cosine to the fourth x. Here we want to think of this as cosine squared x times cosine squared x dx. And what we'll do is we'll change each one using a double angle. So we'll have the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 for each of these. So I'll have two quantities with that in it, changing each cosine squared x term, and then we'll have dx. I have one half and one half really here. I'm going to bump both of those out at the same time. That'll be one fourth integral. So no more fractions in here, at least for now. We'll have one plus cosine two x, two copies of that. And then what I really want to do is distribute these. Um, that's going to be nice for us, except there'll be one term that doesn't fit quite as nicely. So we'll have 1 fourth integral if I distribute 1 times 1, if I have cosine 2x times 1, and another cosine 2x times 1, 
that will be 2 cosine 2 x's for our middle term. So the last one here will have cosine squared of 2x, and that one is the one that's a little bit of a problem now. Okay, because the idea was we can't really directly integrate even powers of sine and cosine. Now I have an even power again because I distributed that. So what I need to do is I need to actually change this one again using a double angle because I still have a cosine squared term there. So I have a one-fourth, I have my integral here, one plus two cosine of 2x, and now just be careful here, we get rid of the square and we double the angle, right? So this one will be 1 plus cosine of double the angle that we have here. This angle is 2x, double that would be 4x, and all of that will be over 2. Now all our powers are gone, and we can start working toward integrating this. I think what I will do is go ahead and split this up and think of this separately. So I'm going to think of this as a one-half, and then I'm also going to think of this as one-half cosine 4x. So we're going to do that. Um, and if we have a one here and I have a half here, then that's one and a half, also known as three halves. So I'm going to combine those. I have 2 cosine of 2x still, and then this is really, like we said, 1 half cosine 4x. All of that dx, we will still have this 1 fourth out front, so I'll leave the 1 fourth for now. If we integrate 3 halves, that will just give us 3 halves x. Plus, so let's see, the antiderivative of cosine would be sine, so that's sine of 2x. The reciprocal would come out, which would be a half, which would reduce the 2, so we just have sine 2x there. In this one, the antiderivative of cosine 4x will be sine 4x. And the reciprocal of 4 will come out, that would be 1 fourth, combining with the 1 half that we already have, that would be 4 times 2 on the bottom, that would be 1 eighth. We'll have our constant of integration. I'll need to distribute my 1 fourth. So really we will have 3 over 8x plus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus 1 over 32 sine of 4x plus c for this one. Okay, we'll jump up to look at the next one. We have sine squared x, cosine squared x, dx. A similar thing is going to happen here, like we did with this one. So now we're kind of starting at this second step where I have a square and a square, and I'm going to convert both squares using the double angle identity for each one. So remember the sine squared x is the 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. The cosine squared x is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. Uh, super similar now from here where we worked from here, so we'll go ahead and bump out the 1 fourth again. A lot of this you're going to just be following along the same steps that I did from the last one, right? So I'll have a 1 minus cosine 2x, and we have a 1 plus cosine 2x. So a little bit different here in that we have conjugates, right? So when you think about distributing, if I have 1 fourth, um, I would have 1 times 1 is 1. I have a negative cosine 2x from the inside terms, and then I have a positive cosine 2x from the outside terms. So I would those would reduce to 0. And then here I would just get minus cosine squared 2x dx. Uh, I would resist the temptation, even though this looks like Pythagorean identity, you know, don't convert this to sine squared 2x, because that's just not really going to get you anywhere anyway. The point is to reduce the power, right, on these squares. So for this one, we'll need to think of 1 fourth integral 1 minus, and then we need to go ahead and change this using a double angle. It's a cosine, so we use 1 plus cosine, we'll double this angle, 2x becomes 4x over 2 dx. And now just be careful distributing the minus into this fraction here. So we have 1, think of this as minus a half, so 1 minus 
a half is just going to give me a half. And then I still have a half cosine 4x as well. So I'll go ahead and write that minus 1 half cosine of 4x dx. Okay, now we'll do the integration. So get 1 fourth integral of 1 half will be 1 half x integral of negative 1 half cosine 4x. So antiderivative of cosine 4x would be sine 4x and then the reciprocal will come out so that would be a 1 fourth coming out we already have a 1 half out there so we'll get minus 1 over 8 sine of 4x plus c distributing my 1 fourth like before we'll get 1 over 8x minus 1 over 32 sine of 4x plus c so a little bit different because the distributing we didn't get a middle term, right? When we distributed, we only ended up with two terms to integrate. Hopefully that covers enough information for you to do your even powers of sine and cosine. Uh, we're going to now do some integral videos on tangents and secants. You'll be able to apply those to cotangents and cosecants. So check those out. We'll see you in the next video.